Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello dear learners, I am Dr. Himani Singh working as an assistant professor with Institute of Business Management, GLA University, Mathura. I welcome you all to the session 13 of the course that's professional communication for managers. And session 13 is on a, again a very interesting topic that's business interview skills. Now as a budding manager, you really need to understand that what are those skills which make you more employable as well as helps you in cracking your interviews. So by the end of this session, you all will be able to understand that how you can go on for approaching with an application letter commonly known as cover letters as well, how you can go on for drafting that. Not just this, also I am going to talk about in this session that what we mean by interviews, why interviews are required, what are the different types of interviews as well as what is the candidate's preparation and also the employer's preparation for an interview. And in the end, I am going to highlight about the do's as well as the don'ts for the interview. Now moving forward with this, before going on to the interview, the first aspect which I want to highlight is that you can go on for preparing your application letter commonly known as cover letter. In the previous session, I discussed how to prepare and how to frame or draft your resume. Many a times what happens is that just sending a resume is not the right way. What you can do is with your resume, you need to attach a cover letter, an application letter, which is going to help you that how, which is going to help you to explain about your skills, competencies in more beautiful manner. And of course, when we talk about the cover letter, this is again one important tool by which you can create a good impression on the employer. Although in the session where we were talking about business letters, there also I highlighted that what are the requisites of a cover letter. Now just moving and strengthening that particular portion, I just want to tell you that yes, you will be writing cover letters. Now it can be a solicited application letter or an unsolicited one. Now first you need to understand that what's the difference between both. When I say you are writing a solicited application letter, it means that somewhere or the other, the organization, they are open with, these, with some job opening and yes, they have invited applications from the candidates. Now, when it comes about writing a solicited application letter, therein you are not uninvited. You are being invited by the company and you are writing a letter in response to that job opening. So, in this, somewhere we believe that maintaining a repo or starting directly with the sentence that as per your advertisement so and so and like this you can directly start with this and somewhat your efforts are also less less in terms that you need not to build or you need not to make it more fancy make it seems more enthusiastic no because why because the company they have already come up with the job opening they have there and you are just writing a cover letter, just writing an application letter because you wanted to apply for the same job opening. 
Whereas, when we talk about sol unsolicited application letters, these are the application letters where and you send such application letters to the organizations might be possible they have not come up with any job opening. It is just you are interested into that organization and as and when some job opening is going to be there, you want that they should consider your application. So, now when I talk about unsolicited application letters, it is more challenging. I will tell you how it is more challenging. See, I am nowhere saying that solicited application letters are simple to write. No, I am not saying this. I am simply trying to convey my point that in the solicited application letter, the organization they have invited the application, whereas in the unsolicited one, there is no invitation from the organization side or the employer side. You yourself is initiating writing this, fine. So, for that, from the initial few lines, you should be able to establish repo with the employer. You should be able to convince the employer that why you are the right person or why they should go on for having a look at your resume, why they should keep on going reading. You need to give reasons in the initial line. That is what is the difference. In the solicited one, you can start directly with the point that this is in continuation or this is linked with the advertisement about the job opening so and so. But here, you need to establish a ground wherein you can emphasize that why you are a good candidate and how you can make a good candidate for that organization. This is just the difference between the solicited application letters and unsolicited application letters. Now see what happens is that uh, when we prepare the letters, whether a solicited one or the unsolicited one, there is just a difference in the initial or you can say difference lies in the starting point. Rest if I talk about the body of the letter, the close of the letter that remains the same, that remains the same. Now irrespective of the fact that whether you are going for solicited or unsolicited, you need to follow IDA model. Remember the IDA model which we used to uh, talk in majorly in context of sales or marketing where A stands for attention, I stands for developing interest, D for desire and A for action, A, I, D, A, commonly known as an IDA model. Yes. In your cover letters, in your application letters, you need to follow the approach, you need to make yourself stick with this IDA approach, wherein the very first and the initial lines should be able to grab the attention of the employer, right? And gradually you should try to develop the interest that why you should read my letter, why you should go on in depth going for my resume. Then you should go on for desire that what you desire and then the final action. So remember this is a simple model of sales right and here also through your application letter somewhere or the other you want to portray that yes you are the right choice for the organization. So again for framing it you should go for following either model. Now, apart from this, there is one more point in this application letter that yes, you frame the letter, draft the letter and based on all such principles which we discussed in the session where we were talking about business writing, fine. So, you are considering all such basic etiquettes of writing. But still what happens is that many a time the employer is not responding you back. So, for that you can go on for application follow-ups. In case you have sent an application 
and the company people they have not replied after one month also. So, what you can do is you can send a application again with some improvisations. You can go into the depth what that what has happened in this one month. You might have added some on your skills. The company might have come up with some new project which you can mention. So, you can improvise your application letter and can send it again. Sometimes what happens is that when you send the application letter, you tend to get a reply back from the company that they will be contacting you soon. But now it is 3 months, 4 months they have not contacted you, right. In that case, you can again write a letter, write an application that somewhere you said that you will be replying, but I have not received any reply from your end. So, I just, just to tell the employer that after 3, 4 months also, you are still available for them if they want or if they have any such space vacant, fine. So, you should go on for doing a follow up, there is nothing wrong in it, fine. But yes, if you have sent your resume today and day after tomorrow, you are again going for a follow up. So, that does not make the right choice, but again you can go on for following up after one month or three weeks or like that, fine. So, this is how you need to focus upon framing the application letter. Now, moving towards employment interviews as a budding manager, yes, you are going to face interviews not only in the initial phases of your selection or of your career rather, whereas throughout your career progression, you are going to be in a situation wherein you will be giving interviews or either you can be in a situation where are where you are going to take interviews as an interviewer. So, before moving on to that, that what we mean by interviewee and all such things, I just want to go on with a very formal definition of employment interview, which believes that an employment interview is generally a face to face encounter between a recruiter and a candidate in which the recruiter is actually looking for some of the skills which he wants to employ in his or her organization. Now, those skills can be educational qualifications, some competencies, some analytical skills, some decision making skills, some professional qualification, that is what a recruiter wants to probe on. And at the same time, the candidate is also trying to analyze that whether this company is good for me or not, whether this company is going to fit my personality, whether this company is into the growth or somewhere not doing well. So, like this, it is again somewhere a face to face interaction or encounter wherein both the recruiter as well as the candidate, they are trying to probe each other so that they are able to come up with a perfect match. It was Boone who quoted, an employment interview is generally a face to face encounter between the recruiter and the candidate in which the recruiter delves into candidates background, skills, job objectives, interest and attitude and also in turn the candidates used to ask questions about the position, recruiting company, about its growth and so on. Moving further, I just want to highlight that what is the purpose of interviews? Why an organization is focusing on the employment interviews or why as a budding manager, you want to understand that what is an interview? See, through an interview, as this is an interface where two people are interacting, right? So, basically an interview tends to help you in highlighting your value which you can provide to the company. See, before an interview, what reaches to the organization is your resume with your cover letter, fine? 
but there are many things on the resume which you used to write but you are not able to explain there so interview provides you with an opportunity wherein you can establish your value in the mind of the interviewer you can establish a relation a link between you and the organization so that's why we do say to highlight the value which you can provide to the organizations that is what it is going to help you not just this in the resume section when i was talking about composing and drafting the message i said that you need to go on for writing a summary kind of introduction wherein you might be mentioning your career goals your professional goals or your career objective now interview is going to provide you with an opportunity wherein you can explain your career goals whether short term or long term you can explain them well and again when i say explain them well you will be able to establish your reputation with the company also when we talk about purpose that why interview interview provides you an opportunity to get along with the hiring manager from the hiring manager try to understand the company so this is an opportunity for you to understand that what's the basic culture of this organization whether i am suitable or not suitable so all such questions you can ask when you are facing the interview and you can get the answers to those questions as well so that's another purpose also it helps you and provides you with an opportunity to discuss your professional background whether good or bad everything that's an opportunity and with this yes it gives you an opportunity to understand the company culture before moving further i just want to highlight on two aspects that when we talk about an employment interview you will be coming across two terms one is interviewee the person who is being asked questions who is being probed by the interviewers an interviewer is a person who tends to ask questions who tends to probe the other candidate so we do have two people as we said that it is face to face interaction wherein two people are, at least two people are involved one is an interviewer one is the interviewee interviewee is the person who is being asked questions by the interviewer an interviewer is the person who needs to ask questions to the interviewee now moving further i am going to highlight more on to the types of employment interview the very first and the most basic style of interview is structured interviews now structured interviews are also known as patterned interviews also known as directive interview now when i say structured in the structured questionnaires or sorry in the structural interviews the number type and sequence of questions is fixed it is fixed you cannot change as per your own choice it is fixed so structured interview it is also known as patterned interview also known as directive interview wherein you are supposed to ask same questions to all the candidates who are coming to your room you cannot even think of changing the number sequence type of question it remains same for all the candidates who are coming to your cabin for the interview now majorly you will be finding that uh, we tend to use structured interviews wherein we are not looking much for the managerial aspects where we are looking much for the technical aspects wherein we want to know that whether the person who is being interviewed 
that person is good into this machine, this language, some technical skills I just want to know. And I really want to know those technical skills about, about those technical skills from all the candidates who are coming to my camp for the interview. So, remember one thing when we talk about structured, the structure is systematic way. So, interview is happening in some systematic way which you cannot change. In fact, in most of the organization, the number, type, sequence of questions in the structured interviews is being set and predetermined by the top management only. And as per your choice, as per your convenience, you cannot make any changes in that, right? I hope this is coming to you. Moving forward, I am going to talk about unstructured. Now, when I say unstructured, it is also known as unpatterned, non-directive. Non-directive is that you are being given no direction from the top management. Again, it depends on you. You are free to ask any question to any candidate. You need not to have any sequence, type or a number of questions fixed. No, that depends on you. If I feel like asking one candidate, okay, introduce yourself, he is telling me, he is or she is introducing. From the other candidate, I just want to know more about his professional qualification, I can go for it. From another candidate, I am more interested in knowing about his educational qualification as well as his future plans. So this is how I can move upon. I am free to move in any direction, but again, I need to be very, very sure that I should not go on for asking some personal, very personal questions, which are not at all linked with the employment, right? And majorly, you will be finding that yes, for the managerial skills, we go on for such kind of interviews, wherein we need not to follow some pattern or some structure. The last category is of mixed interviews. Now, mixed interviews are the interviews which more commonly you people are going to face as a manager, wherein we say that mixed interviews is a combination of above two. That is structured as well as unstructured, combination of two. So, in such kind of interviews, you will be finding that initial few questions, they are going to be structured, they are going to be asked by all the candidates who are coming to the interview and after that, we are asking any question, any question linked with the employment. For example, I will just tell you that uh, first question is okay, introduce yourself and I am asking this to everyone and now based on this introduction, I am moving forward or first I ask what is your 10th percentage, what was your uh, school name in the 10th or else what are your competencies and after that I am asking introduce yourself and these are the questions which are fixed which are being asked to each and every candidate and then I am free to ask any of the questions, right. So normally you will be finding that uh, in common situations we tend to go for mixed kind of interviews. Moving with the other terminologies we have panel interview, panel interview, yes, more than one interviewer or interviewee, more than one interviewer. Now why, why more than one interviewer when you can get the work done by just one interviewer? Why are you spending, why the organization is spending so much? Of course they are spending. If I am taking, if one of the top management is taking interview, so only one person is involved. If you are asking four different people, four heads of the organization from different departments to sit and take interview, you are utilizing the resources four times. 
So, is it a wise decision? Do not you think it is just wastage of resources which the organization is doing? No, actually it is not because we go on for panel interviews wherein I want to probe the candidate from different areas. These days we talk about having multi skills employees, right? multi skilled employees. So, when we say multi skills, we need to probe them and for that we used to have set of experts. The panel which you are taking it is going to be comprised of people from different expertise area, different specialized area so that they can ask questions from their set of specialization and can analyze that how much good that candidate is into that particular specialization or expertise. So, the main objective, the primary objective of panel interview is to probe a candidate from different set of expertise, so that you can get an idea that how much multi skill that person is. Some people say that yes panel interview is also being conducted to create stress, but dear learners that is just the secondary objective not the primary one. The primary objective is just to check and evaluate a candidate from different set of expertise right. Next in line is stress interview. Now, stress interview majorly you will be finding that for sales people we use this right rapid fire kind of questions are being asked. Now, when I say rapid fire questions just one after the other, one after the other you are not able to complete your answer even and then some other person or the, your interviewer is throwing another question to you and still you are not able to wind that answer still you are getting the another question. So, why this kind of interviews are being conducted? Any idea? To check one's emotional stability, fine. To check one's emotional stability that how much emotionally stable you are. Are you going to get anxious very easily? Are you going to uh, somewhere get aggressive? So, just to check all these skills that whether a person is a cool headed person, calm person or he or she is an aggressive person who is going to abuse back people if they are again under some pressure situation. So, that is what is the basic objective of stress interview to check one's emotional stability skills right. Can we move on? Okay, moving further is the behavioral interview. Now, behavioral interview is basically to probe into your previous experiences, previous experience of course, realistic one. Such questions are somewhere trying to probe into your actual behavior. These questions they are going to start like for example, okay, uh, think of a situation during your school time when you acted as a leader. Now, in this how you are going to answer? You are going to answer with something that when you acted as a leader and you are going to quote the examples for that, right. So, these questions are like this which want which uh, the basic idea behind such interviews is to check your past experiences to check your skills, your behavior, your past behavior, right. Now, moving forward there is another category of uh, interviews that is telephonic interviews. Now, when I say telephonic interviews, yes interviews over the telephone. Make sure when you are talking about telephonic interviews, maintain the same decorum, the way you are maintaining it in the interview room. 
maintain similar decorum. Now, when I say similar decorum, it is everything about your attire, your smile, your gestures, your body position, body posture and so on. If you are thinking that, okay, you are on a telephone and you are just uh, going for a telephonic interview, you can just relax, lay back, you can lie down on the bed and can reply no, a big no. Treat your telephonic interviews as similar to your physical face to face interviews. Because your non-verbal clues reach through the telephone, right? If you are, for example, eating something while answering the questions, the noise is going there. The moment you lie down, your volume, your tone, your pitch tends to vary, fine. And yes, telephonic interviews, the basic idea behind going for telephonic interviews is that uh, I just want to shortlist the candidates from a big number to the smaller one. I want to shortlist that list and to bring the number down. And it's again difficult for me to go for face-to-face uh, -face interaction with all the interviewees. So that's why I am going with this set of strategy. Another is group interview. Remember panel interview? I said more than one interviewers are there. Whereas in group interview, it can be more than one more than one interviewee. Fine. Now, interviewers can be one or can be more than one. That is again a choice, but the basic condition for group interview is that you are going to have interviewees more than one. Now, why are you going for group interviews? See, we have two reasons. One is either you are having shortage of time, time constraint. Right? You are not having much of the time and so that you cannot go on for elaborating it to an hour or so. So that's why that time constraint is there due to which you are going for group interviews. You are calling more than one candidate in the room and you are interviewing. The other major reason for going for the group interview is to go on for real time comparison. How real time comparison? See, for example, you are just left with 5 candidates now, right? Out of 100, you have left with 5 candidates, but now you are a little bit confused. But because somewhere or the other, all these 5 candidates are somewhat good enough, right? At par with each other. So, for them, just to create a clear distinction, clear comparison, you can ask all the five candidates to appear for a group interview, fine. So these are two things or two objectives for a group interview. Moving further is the case interview. Now when we talk about case interview, case interview is hypothetical situational, situational interview. Don't you think it is exactly like behavior interview? No. What was happening in the behavior interview? I was trying to probe your actual experiences from your previous past years, right? But here what I am trying to do? In this interview, I am going to provide you with some hypothetical situations, right? hypothetical situations wherein I will be asking you that what is going to be your decision, how you are going to solve this problem, how you are going to sort this issue out. So, you will be placed into some kind of hypothetical situation and you need to sort that hypothetical situation. But in behavior interviews, there was no hypothetical situation being given to you. That was simply that think of that time when you acted as a leader. 
So, you are going to tell me that when you acted as a leader, but here I am going to give you some situations, some company situations, some hypothetical and I am going to ask you that how you is going to be your reaction. So, when we talk about case based interview, majorly you will be finding that they are conducted to objectify or to understand or to analyze the analytical skills the decision making skills, the problem solving skills of a candidate, fine. So, this is how case interviews move upon. The last category is working interviews. What is working interview? Yes, working interview is real based situation, right. For example, if you say that I, uh, I know how to run this software. During your interview, the employer is going to ask you to make some program on that software or to run that software. That is what is a working interview. Normally, you will be finding that uh, generally working interviews are conducted uh, for technical people, wherein I just want to know that whether they are technically sound or not, whatever they are claiming that yes, they possess such technical skills, they are good enough or not. So, see all these different interviews, they have their own approach, they have their own objectives. So, before designing any type of interview for the candidates, you need to understand that what is your objective, what do you wanted to probe upon and that is how you will be moving towards this interview approach. Is it ok? Any problem in this? Fine. Moving forward, I am going to focus upon that what preparation as a candidate you need to do when you think of appearing for an interview. So, I have segregated it into three aspects that what kind of preparation is required before the interview, what kind of preparation requ is required during the interview and after the interview. So, these are the three things which you need to keep in mind and under this before the interview and all I am going to dif discuss different subheadings. So, let us start with the very first category that is before the interview. That before going for an interview, what preparation you can do? Can you do any preparation or leave it? I will be going into the room, I will be looking after the questions, I will be asking why to prepare. No, you need to do your homework. With this the very first point talks about learning about the organization for which you have applied. Most of the time the biggest blunder interviewee or the candidate tends to do is that they do not know anything about the organization for which they are giving interviews. That is really a very bad impression, a very bad point. So, when I say that you need to learn more about company or the organization, visit the website, look after the vision, mission, values, beliefs, of the organization. Now, you might be saying thinking that why to look for these things? Apart from you should go for just reading the products or the services in which this company deals into. Why I am talking about vision, mission, beliefs, core values and all such things? See this is important. This is important when you are going to prepare answers for your questions. You can relate your personality with the values of the organization and that is how you can again tell the people that why they should hire you, fine. Apart from this, from the company website you will be able to know that what the company is doing, what the company is into, what is the profit figures, how the company is doing, whether it is moving ahead or it is coming down. and 
again after analyzing this that whether they are moving ahead or coming down you can take the decision take the call that whether you want to go for the interview or you does not want to go for the interview right so it's very much required to understand that what the company is all about how many employees are working in the company what extra initiatives company is doing for the society how you can contri contribute to it this you can relate afterwards right and not just the company website you should also go on for looking of the competitors website you might be wondering that why competitors i am going to give interview for company a why i am going to prepare for company b see i am not saying uh, that you need to prepare for company b what i am going to highlight is that you should know that who are the competitors what are the strategies of the competitors what they are doing good and what they are not doing good the way you did the swot for company you should also do the swot for competitors so that you can establish your reputation with the employer that how you can help them in bringing good business in comparison to their competitors and if you don't know that who the competitor is what they are doing then you cannot justify then you cannot give valid reasons behind this right so apart from this if possible you should go on for company publications like auditors report like uh, uh, triple bottom line reporting is happening these days wherein companies they tends to tell about their sustainable practices so you can also relate and you can know about the company that whether this company is a right choice for you or not a right choice whether you are going to like this company whether you really want to work with this company or you don't want you're just doing it for the sake of money so that's quite impactful and quite important and not just this look for the social networks social media and try to find out more about the company that what people are thinking what's their point of view about the products and the services see again i am telling you most of the time the candidates they don't focus on the organization they believe that oh this is my interview i'll just dress up i'll go no you need to understand about the company thoroughly with full dedication right so that was about learning about the organization now next in line planning for employers questions really what i believe is that as a candidate i cannot think about that what my interviewer is going to ask can you think can you guess the questions which your employer is going to ask what do you think is the answer yes or no i think no no it is yes a big yes people do believe that how can i know what the interviewer is going to ask but no you know this trust me you know all the questions what are going to be asked by you by the interviewer what the interviewer is going to ask see every interviewer most of the time they come up with the very general questions only and the most basic in this line is any guesses to this introduce yourself most basic most common mostly asked question but people do blunders while replying to this now when i say introduce yourself what it should comprised of you should take your name you should tell from where you belong to your location you can go on for telling something about your family background your educational qualification 
your professional qualification, any certifications which you think, any accomplishment which you believe is again a distinct one and so on. See, dear learners, it is again very important aspect that you should understand. Each and every question is known to you. I will just tell you some questions and you will trust me that yes, you can analyze. See, introduce yourself. What is your long term or short term goal? Who you think is your role model? What are your hobbies? What do you think is your strength? What is What do you think is your weakness? How you think that you are going to overcome your weakness? How you are going to relate to leadership? So and so and so. Just think once that for which position you are going, in which company you are going and what can be the possible questions an employer or an interviewer can ask you. Just empathize with the interviewer. The moment you are going to empathize, you will be knowing all the questions. So, when I say planning for employers questions, just jot down all the questions and try to frame answers for them. Yes, all of us know that, oh, I know how to introduce myself, I need not to write. But the best strategy for the preparation of your interview, for the preparation of the question that is introduce yourself, the best strategy is to write. Write what you are going to speak in your introduction. Do not just think that, oh, I will be speaking there. I need not to do that. No, just write. That is a strategy which you can go for. Once you will be writing your name, your educational qualification, your city, your family background, your strength, weakness, role model, your uh, achievements, your accomplishments, just frame them. And please, when you are going for this introduce yourself, uh, again be very clear with each and every point. Most of the time what happens, people tend to say that my hobby or my interest is that I like reading books. See, when you quote this that I like reading books, be prepared with another question from the interviewer that he might ask you that, okay, which books you used to read? Now you are totally blank or you might just quote one X, Y, Z book, okay, one uh, that five point someone Chetan by Chetan Bhagat. Just one book and what you are saying that it is your interest, that is your hobby. Do you really think that it can be your hobby if you are just reading one book? Some people say my uh, area of interest is or I really want to travel a lot. So, the interviewer is going to ask, okay, how many places you have traveled so far? And you are simply quoting one city. I went to Haridwar for some religious ceremony. Do you still think that traveling is your hobby? See, my point of conversation here is that whatever you are speaking, be very clear with it. If you are saying that it is your hobby, then it should be a hobby. And what is a hobby? Hobby is what you like to do. Whenever you are going to get chance or not even chance, you are taking time out of that particular work, time for that particular work. So, that is what is a hobby, fine. So, plan things tactfully, prepare the questions, ask yourself that what you can be asked for, prepare your conceptual things as well, that is also very important. When you are a fresher, your conceptual part needs to be strong. I am not saying that when you gain experience, you need not to be very strong with the concepts. I am not saying this. See, what happens is that when you are a fresher, when you are entering the corporate world, the interviewers tends to focus more on the theoretical aspect. But the moment you are having experience of 5, 6, 7 years, they tend to focus their questions more onto the experiential learning, more onto the experiences, more onto your work roles, your responsibilities, your duties at the workplace. So, this is how it is different. So, you need to plan and you trust me, you can think of all the questions. 
Now before the interview you will be taking a file with you, so preparation of file, make sure that uh, whatever documents you are or you want to show, it should be in the chronological order, preferably descending, why I am saying descending that recent qualification should be put and after it should be preceded by the other one, right. So, preparation of file, take a good file, again make sure that it needs to be of good quality, do not go on for very flowery kind of base for the file or the cover of the file should not be that much flowery, it should be sober, it should be some dark colors should be there and uh, prepare the file. You should have a copy of resume, some of your photographs also, some white A4 sheets, blank sheets in your file with your documents and when we say documents again whatever documents are relevant you should only place those documents. Moving forward planning for your physical appearance, see I always tell that uh, when you are going for an interview before one day you should never think about planning for the questions, plan reading about the company, no. One day before you should only focus upon what I am going to wear, how am I going to look, that is what you need to think about, might be I am over exaggerating, but see I am not saying that your physical appearance is going to decide that whether you will be taken in the organization or not, but that is one very important aspect. As in the previous session, I have quoted that it is initially in the initial 30 seconds to 2.5 minutes, right, the interviewers tend to develop an opinion about you, right. So in that, how that opinion is being built him up, one point is physical appearance also adds it to up. If you are going for an interview in a very casual attire, people might take you that you are not sincere towards or you are not again very much dedicated to get into this company. So that is what you need to plan for your physical appearance, make sure that you are not wearing any extra accessories, dark colors, blazers and all such things should be wore, look for the, your shoes as well, they should be polished your hair should be nicely done, personal grooming just focus on that, that is very much required when you are planning for going to the interview. Now during the interview, the warm up, the moment you start entering the gate, always remember that what kind of knock you are giving, it should be a knock like this only twice, you should not bang on the door, enter the room with a smile, see why I am saying that you need to prepare on because you need to prepare, you need to do preparation, you need to practice that when you are entering the room, you are entering with full confidence, with warm uh, expressions, with a small smile on your face because the moment that smile is going to be there in your face, you are going to relax the tension, you are going to control your nervousness. Not just this, you should go and you should ask permission that whether you can sit or not, you should greet properly, do not use only non-verbal gestures for greeting when you are going inside the interview room. Complement non-verbal clues with verbal for greeting, do not only just nod your head for the sake of greeting the interviewers out there. Just say it very clearly, good morning everyone, good morning sir, like this you should go on for, right. So dealing with the questions is, if you know the answer, give it, do not try to make interviewers a fool, they are not, trust me they are not. If you do not know, then just tell them that you, sorry, you are not prepared with this question, but do not try to make them fool, not just this in fact. Take interview as a business conversation, the moment you will feel like that it is a conversation, 
no one is there to judge you it is going to enhance your confidence right so it is a business conversation listen to the interviewer carefully somewhere conclude gracefully and discuss your salary if required right now after the interview yes once the interview is done you are out at your place you should always go on for th sending a thank you message if required you can send a message of inquiry after one or two weeks or the stipulated deadline what they have told you and request for a time extension in case in case the company has offered you the letter for joining but you are waiting for some other offer letter so you can go on for seeking or requesting them for a time extension if you want to join you can send the letter of acceptance and if you do not want to join you can send the letter of declining so this is about after the interview now also as an employer you need to make certain preparations like you need to be well prepared with your questions you need to be well prepared with your thought clarity you need to be well prepared what you are looking in a candidate you cannot just sit like and okay i am going to take interview no you also need to make some preparation you should know the answers to the questions as well otherwise how you are going to judge the people so see dear learners as we have discussed so many things when after the interview during the interview before the interview if you are following all such things that covers up the do's and don'ts so don't think that the interviewer is your friend or enemy he is neither he is just an interviewer treat him as an interviewer that's it do not get nervous take that yes you are confident dress appropriately enter the room with full confidence greet people with verbal as well as non verbal communication right you should not only use non verbal gestures do not go on for making interviewers fool whatever you know just reply be honest as possible but does does not mean that you should not be tactful at the same time you need to be tactful also you need to know that what you should speak inside the interview room and what you should not speak try to highlight more on your achievements and justify them justify them provide certain proofs so that you can tell the people that yes you are the right fit for that job so dear learners in this session we discussed about the preparation of uh, application letters also what we meant by employment interviews uh, what preparation you need to do as a candidate as an employer and yes what you should do and what you should not do for the employment interview so dear learners thank you and happy learning Thank you.